Thanks, Daniel. Hello, everyone. I'm excited about today's session and even more excited that each of you are here with me. Our world is rapidly evolving and that has a direct impact on how we do everything, especially how we conduct business. Every aspect of our lives has an increased reliance on technology and more so than ever before. So when I was growing up, the most advanced technological thing I did was set the clock on the car radio or set up the VCR to record my mother's soap operas, which all the adults found so impressive. And here we are in 2021, and my 10-year-old niece, Michaela, has no idea what a VCR is. And that's what we see in spaces as large as each industry and as intimate as the microcosms of our own departments and project teams. The opportunities for today cannot be solved with the expertise of yesteryears. Sure, there's tried and true wisdom that we should carry forward, but we cannot ignore the myriad of changes that require a shift in how we achieve both business and cybersecurity goals. So with the released increased reliance on tech, naturally comes increased regulation. And with increased regulation comes more visits from the auditors, more questions from the cybersecurity folks and tech leaders and more checklists from our compliance officers. And rightfully so, as the businesses that we run house and protect the sensitive information of our customers, trade secrets, and corporate strategies. But my career path has proven that there is a new way to work with our cybersecurity partners, one that drives business forward while creating a space for innovation. And that is what we'll talk about today. But before we get started, let's set some ground rules and I only have one. Because of the state of our world, we're now forced to facilitate exchanges like these through virtual platforms. And that means for people like me who are accustomed to speaking to audiences in person, I can't see you nodding your head or rolling your eyes. So if you have questions or commentary, I really ask that you all engage with me in the Slack channel after today's presentation, all right? Let's get started with the problem statement. Have you ever done a lot of work for a little bit of money or did what seemed to be a lot of exercise only to see a tiny bit of results? I certainly have, and I can tell you that it is not any fun, okay? Let's start with some honesty. When it comes to cybersecurity, audit, compliance, many of the business leaders I've engaged with feel like the products they work on have too much effort and too little ROI, okay? And it's not to say that the work these teams do are not important. It's just that a lot of the times they may or may not focus on the immediate goals at hand, nor do they address the pressing matters of this day, this quarter, and sometimes this calendar year. And that makes the work sometimes feel inconvenient and challenging. That doesn't feel good because even the right things at the wrong time are the wrong things. So I started my career working for Wall Street Investment Bank, Goldman Sachs. I moved into risk management consulting with PricewaterhouseCoopers. After a few years there, I worked in Rockstar Games in New York City, even got to do voiceover work on some video game titles. After that, I spent some time living and working abroad in Romania and then moved into cybersecurity, where I am now a business information security officer for Warner Media. And what I've learned throughout my career by observing my peers, leaders, business partners, clients is that us risk management folks do a really good job of telling people no. And the word no is an impediment to progress, growth, creativity, innovation. I learned that the hard way, but cybersecurity is a necessary integral part of the corporate ecosystem. But after being shooed away by leaders, having my meetings postponed, getting pushed back on consulting engagement reports, being ignored in the hallways and cafeterias, it was pretty obvious that if we continue to operate as we did, our entire function and selfishly my career would be an uphill battle. We do a really good job of building and maintaining roadblocks, but if we were to simply shift how we delivered nodes, coupling them with alternative solutions that enable the same goal, we would unlock something really unique and special and ultimately valuable. And that should be the goal of anyone who calls himself a business partner 
driving value. So today's session will outline my journey from speaking the language of no to excelling in the business of yes, which is the secret sauce behind a host of accomplishments, including identifying over a million dollars no one knew was missing, turn a 500% ROI in pilot, and reducing cybersecurity incidents by 70% year over year. All right, so let's get started. Okay, nobody likes the auditors. Let's just be for real, right? I mean, who in their right mind wants to be audited, whether it's your own internal audit department or the IRS? Knowing that you're about to be under the gun just doesn't feel good no matter how you slice it. And if you take a step back and think about the way audit teams operate, it's pretty intrusive. And I can say this because I am a certified internal auditor. When I was in public accounting, we'd set a date, we come to the client's office, find a space to hunker down, which means we took over a conference room or two. Then we'd meet our clients, develop a long list of questions, interview them, then make another long list of document requests, and then ask for proof that what they gave us was accurate. And after all of that, which likely went on for a week or two, we would create another list of what could go wrong, what went wrong, and then ask them, what are you going to do to fix it? And then finally, create a report of everything we found wrong and share it with them, their boss, their boss's boss, all the way up to not only the CEO, but the audit committee. Nothing about that feels good. Now, don't misunderstand me. There is some value that comes with these types of projects. Again, one of my proudest accomplishments as an auditor was identifying $1.2 million in revenue leakage. But to have to tell on the people who are responsible, not cool. So it's easy for me to understand why nobody likes the auditors, because they typically don't bring or deliver good news. And it seems that the entire shop is focused on looking to the past instead of where the company is going to land in the future. Now, after a while, I got tired of being the bearer of bad news, right? I don't expect business to be all sunshine and rainbows, but I was also wise enough to understand that the risk management and cybersecurity could not and should not exist in a vacuum of negative reports about the past. So I shift how I operated. And the first thing I did was I went on a listening tour. Instead of diving right in and asking for a long list of reports and proof, I just listen. I ask questions about the people I met with, their teams, their goals, their challenges. Shifting the way I saw the business shifted the way I worked with the business and resulted in the three-pronged strategy that you see on the screen. Establishing alignment, increasing accountability, and driving awareness. By aligning my work with the goals of the team, it became relevant. Being a part of their success strategy made me accountable and driving awareness of not only what went wrong, but promoting what they did right, built trust, okay? This is not just a strategy for auditors, cybersecurity or compliance professionals. This strategy can be used by any shared service professional or business person seeking to drive impact and success alongside cross-functional disciplines, which is a common challenge that's faced by many. Now, the best place to start is by finding the best place to start. It's a process. And the foundational elements of this process are understanding two very important things. First, the business's goals. What is your business looking to achieve? Over the past 17 years, I found that most of the leaders I engage with are looking to impact client experience, client retention, and strong financial performance. The first of Amazon's 14 leadership principles is customer obsession, right? It reads leaders start with the customer and work backwards. They work vigorously to earn and keep customer trust. Although leaders pay attention to competitors, they obsess over customers. And in all my years, I've met a few cybersecurity professionals that were obsessed over their clients. And what I found is that those were the professionals that found success in their roles. They were able to articulate the way operations work. They understood how to navigate the culture. They knew what the business was working for and could align with those priorities and essentially work effectively and appropriately which makes, brings me to the second item that needs to be understood. Your information security strategy, your risk management strategy, your tech strategy, your compliance strategy. Once you know what you're looking to achieve, you can then find the sweet spot where the two overlap, ensuring that the work you do is relevant not only to you, 
but to your business partners, your clients, your executive leaders. And by doing this, you create a what's in it for me. And that sets the tone for value creation as a basis for relevant impact. If you can convince your collaborator that the work you're doing is going to help them achieve their goals, I can nearly guarantee you that they will be much more open to work with you. And that is the point, the sweet spot where you're tra- where you transition from performing a task to offering a service and enabling success. Now, what most love and some hate about the concept of accountability is that it requires action. So it's no surprise that the first word you see on the screen is operationalize, okay? It's the first prong of the strategy. We talk about alignment of strategy, goals, purpose, agenda. Once you've established that what you're working for then you actually have to do some work. So as you build the path to achieving your goal, you will essentially be building your execution strategy. And this is a key area where the rubber meets the road, but it can't be done without the first piece of strategy alignment locked down. Only when there is sync between the, what the business is working for and what the InfoSec teams are looking to achieve can this be unlocked. Now, the key here is leveraging the strengths of your cybersecurity partners to your advantage. Okay, risk management folks are specialists in saying what can go wrong. The reason why that is painful is that they always test for what has gone wrong retroactively. Instead, equip them to identify what could go wrong as you look ahead. This is a key strategy I've used to engage my business leaders as their business information security officer. Of course, I do review incident metrics to understand what happened, where we can work on reducing security incidents. But instead of beating the business over the head with that data, I leverage that perspective against their slate of new product developments and strategic initiatives to identify pockets of opportunity. All right. My role as a VSO is to advocate for the business across the security organization and advocate prudent risk taking within the business. And if positioned correctly, I am the organization's secret information security weapon. So for example, a business unit at one of my old companies was in the process of creating a completely digital enrollment process for a product. And when I sat in on the planning sessions, I learned that the registration for the product and its service required capturing and validating of sensitive private information. But when I went back to do some research on that business, looking at their incidents, I realized that this product and service were ripe for fraud. And instead of simply delivering that information to the business unit, I didn't only approach them with problems, but with solutions and not just one, but multiple. Crafting solutions that were relevant required that I do some background research, understand the client and their experience, figure out what the challenges were and figure out a way to solve them before they started. And that is what we have to challenge our cybersecurity folks to do. We have to be solution oriented. If we wanna sit at the table, we have to carry our weight, okay? And use our ability to find what can go wrong to the business's advantage. Instead of relying on being detective, leverage our expertise to be preventive, okay? In my current role, I sit in the SLT meetings of all of my business partners and their executive leaders. I'm the only one there that's not on their direct reports roster. Why? Not only because I asked, but because during my listening tour, I shared with them that the purpose of my role is to find out ways to facilitate their goals from the lens of information security. Instead of telling them what they cannot do, my responsibility is to figure out what they can do without being disruptive. This means that I coordinate with insights, incident management, privacy, legal, architecture, third party, and a host of other teams to manage the InfoSec work stream across their initiatives. And because I deliver results, they pull me in early. And because they pull me in early, I'm able to check off all the InfoSec boxes ahead of time so that they can be pushed forward and be great. Now, One of my best friends for many years is a guy we'll call John. And John and I have known each other for over 15 years. And he recently moved into sales and he's doing a fantastic job. And the more I think about the way John operates as a person, I can see why. He's great at keeping in touch, which is probably why our friendship has lasted this long. Um, he, He reaches out, he calls, he stays in contact. And then... When he calls, he has no issue in telling me everything that's going on with him. He shares his story of wins, challenges, triumphs in a way that's exciting, engaging, and relatable. 
So much so by the time he gets finished, I feel compared to share my story too. And what John Stott has done for me is, is highlight a couple key things. The necessity of establishing connection and the importance of sharing your story. Many times we make the mistake of thinking that just doing a good job and keeping our heads down is enough. Somebody will notice, but that is the furthest thing from the truth. On my podcast, Urban Girl Corporate World, I interview one of my former leaders, Kim Alvarella, about being a woman working in the cybersecurity industry. Interestingly enough, both she and I started our careers on Wall Street, worked in finance, and now we're in tech. I was the only woman on my last team before coming to my current company, and having worked with all men for a few years, I picked up some of their habits, which we dive into on that podcast episode, and one of which is strategic storytelling, how you position experiences and tasks to weave together a talk track for a broader purpose. Each and everything that we do has impact, whether we acknowledge it or not. But when we take the time to think things through, especially before we act, we are equipping ourselves with the power that can shift odds of all kinds in our favor. When I gave my bit, my, a bit of my background earlier, I shared my story in a way that focused on impact, globalization, results, and wins. If I tell somebody I led an audit, great. Thousands of people do that every day. But if I share with someone that I executed and curated a strategy that found and, and, and led to over a million dollar impact on revenue, that piques interest, right? Then that person will start to think, have I found a million dollars? Do we have a revenue linkage problem? And am I confident that if we did, we had the right people to find it? So the way that I tell that story essentially positions me as the person to solve those types of problems. It shows I understand my business. I know where to look to find things that others may not see, right? It shows I'm creative. I think outside the box. And most importantly, the work that I do has a bottom line impact. So we have to elevate the stories we tell. And that story can be one of many flavors, right? Challenge your risk management and cybersecurity professionals to tell us how their work impacts our future business, okay? We have the opportunity to help craft that talk track. Let's not just talk about what went wrong, but also what went right. As an InfoSec leader supporting a few business units, I always maintain a roster of best practices. That way, when I work with other leaders, we don't have to recreate the wheel. OK, when I share an overview of the business to my fellow tech practitioners, I present them in their best light and we owe it to ourselves to do the same thing for us. All right. Let's recap the methodology. First, you want to align your goals with that of your business partners. OK, hold your InfoSec folks accountable. Invite the information security partners in. Challenge them to be more than active listeners. Right. We need to empower ourselves to leverage our knack for finding what can go wrong as we create, produce, pilot and innovate. OK, measure the results of your success and make people aware and do the same for your failures. Failures are just as effective, if not more than creating an impactful story. All right. So first, what is the goal, not only of your business, but your tech organizations? Right. Secondly, you need to know who to engage. The chief information security officer or your assigned BSO is a great start if you're in the business or a strategic leader who's a decision maker or operationally from a project management perspective is great if you're in the tech looking out to the business unit. Next, you need to know where to focus. Find the sweet spot. Acquire some easy wins by addressing low-hanging fruit and zero in on building trust. Strategize on how to get results from your InfoSec partners or from your business and know when to move because the right things at the wrong time are the wrong things, okay? If you enjoyed today's presentation and would like to hear more, I invite you to continue to elevate the exchange. I would love for you to tune into my podcast, Urban Girl Corporate World, the one-stop shop for winning at work. I launched this labor of love on International Women's Day last year. I've got guests, including a former White House senior advisor, CISOs, tech executives from TikTok, Amazon, IBM, history-making politicians, and entrepreneurs. You can also join our Facebook community. We are a private group of 800 women from all over the world, unpacking our experiences and learnings in a safe digital space. And last, you can visit my website, letsworkletswin.com slash events to register for future webinars. I truly hope you all found this helpful. 
Thank you so much.